I found it on Rayma Radio. Welcome to Rayma Radio, the weekly podcast on faith, culture, music, and more. Today we are so privileged to have Mr. Jory Leong with us. Mr. Jory Leong is from SSMC, otherwise known as Sungai Wei Subang Methodist Church, and he happens to be the current chairman of Scripture Union Peninsula Malaysia, a parachurch organisation commonly referred to as SU. Now, SU Peninsula Malaysia will be hosting SU Global's all important uh, 150th anniversary. Gathering in November. So, in case you did not catch that, SU or Scripture Union globally is 150 years old. <laughs> so, happy birthday to SU and Mr. Jory Leong. Thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you, Doreen. Um, thank you for having me here this morning. Oh, pleasure. Now, you're involved in many organizations. You know, let's talk today about SU, of which you are the current chairman. What's the brief history of SU Peninsula Malaysia? As you, uh, Malaysia was founded in 1961. Mm-hmm. So, in fact, last year we celebrated our 55th anniversary. So, we had a grand celebration to thank our volunteers and to also continue to remind people that we have been around for more than half a century. Our vision and a mission is actually to reach out to the next generation with God's Word. So, essentially, we are a ministry that focuses our efforts to the younger generation. Now, Jory, many of us have heard of SU uh, growing up, you know, Scripture Union. And some of us are even familiar with its logo, you know, Flame logo. But most of us may not be aware of the extent of the organization's reach. So tell us a little bit about the things that SU does. Okay, Um, but before I go into what SU does, Mm -hmm. you mentioned about the logo and I recall a very funny um, response that one of our workers received uh, recently. Our worker was sharing with us that he was conducting a training among some young people and some of them are not from churches. So when he asked the question, where do you think I come from or which organization do I come from? So there was a total silence and then the our staff said, okay, he was wearing SU's t-shirt and the logo was right up there. Uh-huh. So he just pointed to the logo and said, what do you think um, this organization represents? And one young man raised his hand and looked at the logo and said, Dipavali? <laughs> <laughs> so... I mean, the logo is indeed very meaningful, but <laughs> unfortunately, can be sometimes can be well. misunderstood. Yeah. <laughs> Due to cultural, cultural implications, right? Yeah, so they had a good laugh. <laughs> Going back to your question, Doreen, um, SU does, has got four core ministries. Okay. The first of which is Bible engagement. Yeah. In short, what we do is that we produce Bible reading resources and we also um, want to help our gen- the younger generation to really get back and be grounded in the Word of God. I see. Through trainings, through seminars, and through camps. Mm. So that's the first um, core ministry. The second core ministry is youth ministry. So which means apart from grounding them in the Word of God, we're trying to also develop them in their life skills about all aspects of their life in growing up as a Christian, as a young believer in Christ. Mm -hmm. So what we do again through camps and also through various forms of... um, training, uh, seminars, and also helping out with school Christian fellowships. That's another core ministry. In Malaysia, we are privileged to be allowed to have Christian fellowships in schools. Yes. You know, in Malaysia, we have more than 2,000 schools all over in Peninsula Malaysia. Okay. Secondary schools. But we only have less than 100 CFs in schools. And the Ministry of Education of Malaysia have officially allowed and recognized the establishment of Christian fellowships in schools and part of SU's ministry is to help and support to to facilitate facilitate, to organize and also to help them administer the CF so that's how we support youth ministry in in Malaysia Mm. by sending our workers in uh, as much as possible the third area of ministry is children uh, meaning that those who are in primary school Uh, for the children ministry what we've been doing is that we have been helping the rural churches to train up their Sunday school facilitators. We also produce Bible resource materials like uh, quiet time materials for children, Mm -hmm. both in the English language and also in the Chinese language. And in fact, our Bible resource material for the children in Chinese language is very well received. And uh, if you go to Chinese churches, when we mention our material, they are very uh, well aware of it, even though some of them don't even realize it's from Scripture Union. Mm. The fourth core ministry is camping. Camping is not just a, a facility that we have. In fact, um, as you have been privileged to 
own a campsite in Tapa. Yeah, well-known one. Yeah, thank you, thank you. <laughs> it is seven acres, and we have deliberately kept it very natural. Ah. We have built uh, dormitories, but large part of the campsite is still very much uh, untouched uh, by development. Back to nature. Back to nature, <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> so what we do is that we actually not only run camps to teach the Word of God, but it was also a campsite that enables people to do team building uh, ministries. So other organizations, whether it be Christian or non-Christian organizations, have actually used our campsite uh, to, to, to run their events as well. Okay. So these are the core areas of ministry. Okay, that's great. Now we are talking to Mr. Jory Leong, who is the chairman of Scripture Union Peninsula Malaysia. We're going to go for a short break. Stay with us. Rema Radio. Hi, so if you're out there and you're looking for a mentor uh, or you are a mentee or a mentor looking to mentee someone, um, Open Minds is actually launching a new product called Open Space. Um, and basically, this is a mentor and mentee pairing platform on your mobile app. And you can download it at the Apple App Store or Google Play Store coming August. And if you want to find out more information about this, you can log on to www.theopenspace.my. Hi, I'm Pastor Victor from Bible College of Malaysia. And now I'm reading to you John 3, 16 and 17. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through Him. Hello there, I'm Edmund Lawrence Smith, Pastor Ed, they call me. I'm from Real Love Ministry Malacca, a ministry that reaches out to the marginalized community and particularly the sexually broken, meaning those who are struggling with LGBT issues and even porn addiction, masturbation issues, and so on and so forth. If you are struggling with this kind of issues and you are looking for a place that you can go to for help, do get in touch with us. You can contact me directly, WhatsApp me on 016-665-8773 or even if you're on Facebook, Please join our Facebook group. It's www.simb.my. SIMB stands for She is My Brother, which is a project that we have started in bringing forth this good news to those who are struggling. We have an annual event which is going to happen on the 1st of December and it's called TFD, which stands for Thanksgiving Fundraising Dinner. And if you are interested to have a glimpse of what my ministry is all about, do attend our dinner. Just get in touch with me and I'll give you more information. For those of you who are, have a loved one who's struggling, we have programs for you that you can come and learn and be educated on how to reach out to those who are struggling in your life. Thank you. God bless each and every one of you. Welcome back. We have with us Mr. Jory Leong from SU Peninsula Malaysia. Now, Jory, coming back into the questions um, that I have for you today, all these years with SU Scripture Union, you know, you've said you're celebrating your 50th anniversary. These years cannot have been without their trials, you know, for the organization. I think 50 years is a really <laughs> long time. And um, can you tell us about one trial in particular uh, that stands out to you and it could be unique in whatever way and why? Why you think that was a special thing? I would say that the biggest challenge we have as a ministry is to stay by, um, in trying to stay relevant. And by saying that, what I mean is that um, we realize that as a Christian organization, the importance and staying true to the Word of God is so important. But the approach in any ministry has to change because of an, a changing culture, changing generation. And as Scripture Union, like any other uh, Christian body, we realize that the greatest challenge we have is to ask ourselves, is our ministry still fulfilling the purpose in which God has called us for? Mm -hmm. um, for example, when we talk about quiet time materials, you know, we have always been producing hard copies of quiet time materials. Yes. And we have blessed so many lives and we thank God for that. Yeah, I have some at home too. Oh, oh wonderful, Dorian. <laughs> that's why I can see you are quite a mature Christian. No, that's, that's why I recognize the flame. <laughs> and, the flame, okay. And that's why it's I laughed like at the... Uh? No, that's why I laughed at the Deepavali joke because I, I, I didn't know actually what you were going to say at that time. But okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> some years ago, 
we had to revisit the fact that our sales or distribution of the quiet time materials have dwindled considerably over the years. Mm. And we ask ourselves why. Mm. And we have to deal with the hard question of the fact that there are tons of materials out there available, Bible reading, reading materials, devotional material out there, um, e-copies, you know, online. Out on, online yeah. Yeah. So we took actually a very um, uh, uh, important decision to move even our materials online for free. So we have actually now published uh, made available our Bible reading reading material on U version. Have you heard of U version? U version is the most used Bible app in the entire world. Okay. So everybody, if today you have a Bible app, I'm almost sure it's actually from U version. That's the organization that organizes it. So we have actually um, got sought permission, and we are now putting our quiet time materials on to U version, so that anybody else who wants to have a guided reading material, our materials are also on it. Okay, that's great. So mm-hmm. you're actually uh, uh, going to technology, high technology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something that <laughs> uh, older technology. generation like us uh, struggle to keep pace with. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. Evolving, evolving. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow, okay. So that, that's a good story. Now let's, let me ask you a little bit about the other people who serve at Scripture Union, you know. Um, I think you mentioned previously, you know, there might be staff with Scripture Union and perhaps other volunteers like yourself. How many are there? We currently are quite lean. We have about 13 to 14 staff mm-hmm. full-time. We mm-hmm. do have volunteers, obviously, when we run camps, we need volunteers. 13 to 14 staff is actually quite a lot. <laughs> quite a lot. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay, okay. But I know for the amount of work that you do, maybe yeah. you consider it lean. Okay, okay, yeah. <laughs> Simply because, you know, when we talk about the four departments that we have, yeah. we have only two workers in the youth department. Okay. And imagine, as I mentioned earlier, we are trying to reach out to more than 100 schools. Mm. And how many can actually an individual take care of how many schools can they take care of sure, so sure. in a sense that we thank God for our existing uh, complement of staff but at the same time we recognise the fact that we need much more Jory you know you must have mem- many memories from Scripture Union all these years because you know you've been chairman and before that you were a volunteer share some memories with us from the early days maybe even even before you became chairman when you were a volunteer share something that was that is close to your heart that's very special to you Ah. Huh. There are so many memories. Which one would be most pertinent? I, I think I can recall um, at least uh, more than 10 years ago, mm-hmm. I was speaking at one of the Scripture Union camp. Mm-hmm. And at the camp, uh, apart from just being a speaker, we were also involved in leading a small group of campers. And at the camp, when uh, I was leading this group, group, small group of campers, you know, I can see that it's a group of young people that were so eager, mm-hmm. so eager that, you know, they're always there in the meeting place even before I could be there. For oh. example, it sounds small, uh, sounds like petty, but actually it was very meaningful to me that they were more eager than I was. Well, not that I was not eager, I was so busy. <laughs> <laughs> you were just tired. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But, you know, I remember that uh, I had to leave early from the camp yeah. uh, because I had work assignment. Mm. I, I had to leave uh, from a campsite uh, on an evening of the eve of the end of the camp. But because it was actually a, a rainy day and I think that they were worried that it was the road going to be slippery, I think the camp was in Cameron Highlands. You know, the group of them came up to me just before I left and they said that somehow they feel very heavy-hearted, number one, that I was leaving them and they felt even in that two days, we became so close together. And secondly, they were so worried for me, even though I'm not sure why, that mm. I was driving home alone mm. in the night downhill. They came together very spontaneously and just said that we want to pray for you. And it was not just a short prayer. They prayed for easily 10, 15 minutes and some of them shed tears. Mm. I, I didn't understand why. But it reminded me of the fact that sometimes we underestimate the importance of camps in a very concentrated environment whereby you actually build relationships and friendships. And only last week, I heard that at least one of them has now become a full-time missionary in Thailand. And this was one of the girls that really was so involved in the Bible study and the sessions that we had. And I'm so glad, so encouraged, even though I've not kept touch with her, that she's now been, you know, responded to God's call upon her life and served full, served, serving full-time in Thailand as mm. a missionary. Oh, thank you. Beautiful story. Mm-hmm. Now we're going to go for another short break and we'll be right back. Stay with us. Short-Term Operation Relief Mission, a life-changing experience for youth and young adults. We're looking for volunteers who are willing and daring to experience life outside of their comfort zone. Come and make a difference in rural communities in Cambodia as well as Sabah. 
You can get more information at Terence Depp, T E R E N C E D E B dot com slash storm, S T O R M. Come and make a difference. Hello, I'm Joseph, serving in Shelter Home for Children. Father God, thank you so much for today, for the lives,、uh, life and、uh, grace you've given in our life. We, as your servant, as we live today, as we serve you, we pray for guidance, protection, and also wisdom, a lot, in our daily lives. Make it a,、uh, an opportunity to serve、uh, people through the serving that we pray that their life will be able to transform. And through that, they will be able to see you. In Jesus' name, Amen. Hi, I'm Marian from Scripture Union, and calling all youths, students, Christian fellowship teachers, and youth workers throughout Peninsular Malaysia. If you are interested in how you can be starting off Christian fellowship in your school, or if you are trying to seek to help your youths to grow in the knowledge of God's word and to develop a love for Scripture, if you are a Christian fellowship teacher and you are struggling in finding resources to help to teach and guide your students in God's word, then look no further. Come and visit our website today at www.su.org.my for more information. Red. We are back on air with Jory Leong, the chairman of Scripture Union Peninsula Malaysia. Now, Jory, we were talking about you know Scripture Union,、um, the stories from last time, you know、uh, when it began, the programs that it runs, and your、uh, participation in the organisation. Let's talk about finances now, because you're also <laughs> you're also a qualified accountant, <laughs> so just as well. <laughs> How is Scripture Union funded?、Um, we. Being a parachurch organization,、uh, we our funders come from either churches or、mm-hmm. individual supporters. All these fifty years. All these fifty、wow. years,、uh, God has been good,、uh, and our supporters have been faithful. We get a good balance of、uh, support from、uh, churches and as well as individuals who somehow have a burden、uh, for the ministry in which SU is involved. Hmm. Okay. Mm. And so, just got to ask you, you know, in the interest of good financial governance. Is SU audited? Oh yes, we are. We are an、uh, organization that's registered as a society in Malaysia. Yes. So under the laws of Malaysia, we have to submit our accounts to the regulators、ah. at least once a year.、Okay. So we do have our formal meetings, AGMs. We have to actually audit our accounts and submit it to our regulators as well. Wow. So on 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 your part, you know, you, you're being the chairman of SU. It's not just about organizing people. It's not just about volunteers. Not just about programs. Not just about prayer and all、mm. this kind of stuff. You've also got to see to the financial auditing side of、yes. it, which can be quite.、Uh, that that、tedious. is why <laughs> that part of my own maybe assessment of my own.、Uh, Calling is that governance is a、uh, something close to my heart, being a lawyer and also a qualified accountant. So, as far as apart from just focusing on the ministry, we want to be sure that we are accountable, accountable to the people that gives us their money,、mm. and to be sure that what we use for is、um, for the purpose in which the money was given for, and therefore we have to be faithful in our stewardship of what、right. has been given to us. Okay,、mm-hmm. you know, speaking of all of this, what are what are some of SU's current pressing needs? I want to say, you know, and how can listeners today help out or help even be involved? Anything? Ah, excellent question, Doreen. <laughs> I was、um, sharing with、uh, some people last week when we actually went to Ipoh for an event to thank the supporters there in Ipoh of、uh, SU's ministry, and I shared four things in which. People can actually、uh, support us. The first of all is obviously to pray for us,、mm. because no organization can a Christian organization can continue without prayer.、Yes. We must realize that in everything we must undergird our ministry and work through prayer. And we have a prayer newsletter that goes out, and we encourage our people, and we're thankful that in times when things go smoothly, we think that everything was、uh, done through human effort, but it is because a lot of prayer has gone、uh, before that event. The second thing is actually to seek for volunteers.、Uh, like I mentioned, we have、uh, about thirteen staff, and we run many camps, many events. We run more than forty, fifty events a year. And without volunteers helping us at camps 
of 100 people, 50 people, and also running training events, we kind of function as an organization. So we encourage more people who have a heart for the next generation to avail of themselves. They don't have to be highly qualified. They just need to have a heart for God and heart for people. The third is to become our ambassadors. Mm. Ambassadors meaning that to be able to, even if they can't volunteer at our events, when they hear of people talking about reaching the next generation, maybe they can be our mouthpiece. They can be somebody who encourage another Christian to say that why not consider being part of SU in any form, anyhow that they can. The last thing that I thought of is giving. Mm. Uh, this is actually a sensitive topic, but when I became chairman, I... Uh, being who I was, uh, who I am as a lawyer and accountant, mm -hmm. I was very conscious of numbers <laughs> and I looked at <laughs> our accounts. That's a good thing as an accountant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The problem they say the uh, you know, lawyer and accountant is a little <laughs> little combination. Well, one they is say, words, one, one is, is numbers. Numbers, yeah, that's right. So we are. Uh, so you don't want to mess with you. <laughs> oh, no, I don't want to mess with you. We then. are little and we are terrible people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good one. <laughs> okay. So when I looked at our numbers, I, I, I would unashamedly inform, I mean, tell you and tell the listeners here is that, um, so of last year anyway, we were running on a deficit for seven years, seven consecutive years. So I, I was very troubled mm. because no organization, Christian or non-Christian, can survive on the deficit for seven years running. Yes. But by the grace of God, we had some reserve from the early years. And of course, our reserves were fast depleting. And I, I, I say that there must something must be done because if not, the ministry of God will stop. And we still thank God that there's a still a steady flow of um, Christians who want to serve in SU as a full-time worker. So we need obviously more money. And on top of that, our ministry was growing. We've got tremendous demands from churches, even from organizations like Boys Brigade, Girls Brigade, to run Christian education, training, seminars for them. But we were short of staff. So how do you, what, what kind of steps can you take, could you t have taken to, you know, sort of step, step up, up that giving part of it? What I did was that I, I shared with the council, which is the governing body of Scripture Union, about this thing I heard when I was a young Christian who just came back from my studies overseas. I attended an event uh, where George Verver, the founder of um, Operation Mobilization, mm, he was sharing, yeah. OM, yeah. He said this, somebody asked him a question in an in a, in a, in a uh, Q&A. What would be the greatest need of your ministry? And he said two things. Firstly, people. Secondly, money. It was pretty interesting. And the person who asked him the question didn't let up and asked him between the two, which would be the greater need? Mm. George Rover paused and said, if you ask me between people and money resource, I need money more than people. Oh, food it was for a bit thought. Food for thought. Yeah. And his reasoning was very simple. Without money, I can't hire the people. I can have people but without money, how am I going to support my workers? They need mm. to feed their family. Need to, they need to feed themselves. Right. So at and the end of the day, we have to be like very practical. It's the operation very practical, cost. Yeah, and yeah. That's right. Mm. So in answering the question, I would say our greatest need is finances. Sure. And I've shared this with our council. And we therefore took uh, an initiative. First time ever in the 50-year history of SU, two years ago, we started having fundraising events. We started with a small group of three, four, uh, 30, 40 people to share with them our need. It is both a vision sharing and also a fundraising event. Mm. And last year, we had a bit bigger scale, about two, three hundred people. And this year, we'll probably be having one more. So what we have done is that we have tried to share, cast the vision of a scripture union with many people, especially with business, uh, Christian businessmen, who I'm sure many of them have a heart to see the kingdom of God grow. Yeah. But because of their uh, different skill set maybe their gifting is in giving yes. yes and I'm thankful for people in the marketplace to actually have network I mean put us together with people who have a heart to give but sometimes maybe not sure of where to give right need to know a little bit more about exactly. the organisation yeah. how it's run what they do the people behind exactly. it and if all these kind of if things if they're business people they are not they come from a very business uh, mindset I need to know what am I putting my course, money to? Like in the business. You know, it's I like an investment. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You got it. You, you put the, you use the correct word. It's an investment. They need to know whether are they getting the returns. It may yeah. not be monetary form, but in the fruits of the ministry. Understand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally understand. 
Okay, well, that has been an excellent conversation. And, you know, I've I got to admit, I know so much more about Scripture Union <laughs> than talking to you. Thank you, Dory. Thank you. So that's you. good. That's good that I know a little bit more about the flame. <laughs> it's not... The, okay. the, the, the flame logo. The flame logo, okay. <laughs> the flame logo. <laughs> and uh, a bit more about than the printed materials that I have in my house. Okay. <laughs> um, so thank you, Mr. Jory Leong, uh, who is the chairman of Scripture Union Peninsula Malaysia, for joining us today. And uh, that was really an enlightening conversation. May God bless Scripture Union and may God bless you in your ministries. Thank you, Doreen. And thank Thank you, Rama.
segment's episode features music by Reland. Today's episode is recorded, edited and mixed by Moses Chan at Prodeo Studio. Stream or download new episodes weekly on Friday evening. Like us on Facebook to find out the latest from Rayma Radio. Leave us a message and let us know what you'd like to hear in future episodes. You don't want to miss Pastor Mohan Singh, Healing the Royal Sun. Share that Shiloh AOG in the next segment. God bless. You listen to us? Now we want to listen to you. Go to raymarad.io slash survey and help us know you better in our efforts to create and curate content that you want to hear on Rayma Radio. Once again, that's raymarad.io forward slash survey. Let your voice be heard. Rayma Radio is a non-profit initiative by the Love Malaysia Media Project. Time, talent and treasure is put into creating the content you listen to. Your support enables us to keep this going and expand further. Log on to www.raymarad.io slash support to find out how you can partner with us in creating value-adding content that ministers to the masses. Once again, that's www.raymarad.io slash support. Let's get the word out there. I found it on Rima Radio.